Dan, one of the great things I like about you is that you can laugh at yourself. So with that, I want to say happy anniversary. <laughs> I saw you tweeting about it on the play in the end zone. I know you you, you lived that thing down, right? Somebody did that a couple well, of weeks I mean, back. Yeah, I mean, thanks thanks to people like Adam Schefter and you guys know, and Jimmy Garoppolo, <laughs> certainly. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I honestly did not know it was that until this morning. I was watching the tape. I think I was watching, like, the, the St. Seattle game and – all of a sudden, I peeked at my phone and I saw Shefty tweeted it out. I was like, "Who's better than Schefter, man?" Just yeah, got a couple million followers. Let's remind them. Yeah, good friend. That's a good friend, Adam yeah. Schefter. That's for sure. All right, so uh, I a tweet I said, you know, people ask what's the best part about working at ESPN. I said it's the people. It is the people. <laughs> <laughs> better be. So the Patriots took care of business. It went up against. I mean, it was arguably the worst defense in football, but still, uh, Bailey Zappi. Uh, first yeah. career start. I think it was a pretty simple game plan for him, but overall, what did you yeah. think about him in the circumstances? Yeah, I mean, he just didn't do anything to hurt the football team. He did everything that was asked in the, the simplistic fashion, and there's something to be said about that. So I think, like, overall, my big takeaway was he made one real throw. And I'm not <laughs> trying to knock him in, in the least bit. Like, I've been in that role. I, I completely understand what it feels like to go out there and be that. And there is something to be said for going and making those throws, the easy ones, the simple ones. Hey, we're, we're going to throw an out route. We're going to throw a, a slant route. You're going to throw the screen. We're going to shallow. Great. I think the touchdown that he throws down the sideline, the whole shot, is probably the only real, like, feels like real NFL throw. Um, Jacoby obviously had another big game versus man coverage. Their run game, and I've talked about this for a couple weeks now, inside their two guards. Um, is as good as anybody's in the league, candidly. But Bailey is just basically doing everything that you would sit there and say. And Steve Young, I think, is famous for this. Don't as a backup. Don't don't be the person to lose the game. And he's really playing with that mantra. So I don't know if you saw Bill Belichick's press conference today or not. But just to paraphrase it, he was asked if uh, if uh, if Mac is healthy, will he be the starter? And he said, uh, you know, we'll see. So my question, he didn't. My question is, what does it mean to you if, if a head coach won't declare a quarterback the starter not after an injury? Yeah, nothing that Bill Belichick says I try to decipher because he's the greatest ever when it comes to saying a bunch without saying anything at all. So, um, listen, I will be very clear: there is absolutely no shot that Bailey Zappi even sniffs becoming the starting quarterback for the New England Patriots as long as Mac Jones is on the team. That is not a knock to Bailey Zappi, but Mac Jones has the chance to be a very, very good long-term NFL pro, and he's proven it. Um, This is very similar to the Cooper Rush, Dak Prescott conversation in Dallas. So, uh, again, with all due respect to Coach Belichick, what he says some stuff, I don't even pay attention to it because I know he has zero desire to hint at anything related to um, his actual beliefs. Okay, so, so do speak. you think? But but okay, so but why not? Just in general, <laughs> like it would, it, why not admit it? Because he's done it in the past with other quarterbacks, Cam Newton, Tom Brady. Would there be some sort of gamesmanship? So maybe it's not gamesmanship. It's just like a message to uh, Mac Jones. Like you know, you start the season not great. You were throwing interceptions. Is this some sort of like message to him? Um, I think Coach Belichick is always talking to his team through the media. Great coaches do that. Nick Saban is notorious, and obviously their relationship. Uh, there's always a way to kind of communicate to your football team messages that you want, to, to individual players' messages that you want. So, you know, um, I, I, don't, I just don't think that Coach, Coach Belichick knows football better than anybody in the history of the planet, you know? And it, I, I don't think he's sitting there going, well, we, we, we played good one game against a, a team that right now is the – the softest defense in the NFL in Green Bay, and then we played solid offensively against a team that had given up more points and more yards than anybody in the NFL. Great, we've got a superstar quarterback. You know, I just, I, I think my my viewpoint is just a little bit different. With certainly, he might be trying to send a message, but there's no reality here that makes Bailey Zappi um, a threat or a potential person to unseat Mac Jones. We're talking to Dan Orlovsky from ESPN. And, Dan, so I want you to spell this out for people who may be getting the zappy fever, getting on the bandwagon with the backup quarterback. What are the qualities that elevate Mac Jones so high, in your opinion, above Bailey Zappi? And no shot at Zappi, but just what are the differences there? 
Yeah, first of all, Bailey Zappi's done a nice job. So it's a credit to him that he's even a part of this conversation. So Mac plays significantly faster, both physically and mentally. Mac can cancel out things pre-snap in such a short amount of time. Um, He has a way quicker delivery. His ball placement is significantly better. The rhythm that he plays at the top of his pocket, he has a greater understanding of who he is and who he isn't. His ability to diagnose post-snap movement and coverage. um, I mean, these are the things. He's elite at this, this stuff. He's not good at it. He's elite at it. And... Part of it is because of the the, the the offense that he ran at Bama. Part of it is going against the Bama defense every day at practice. So, you know, while Bailey might do a couple of those things well or good, certainly in the short body of work that we have at him, of him, we've got a year in the NFL and then two plus years in college of watching Mac do this stuff and being like, well, that's how it looks. That's how it looks. So they're not, there, there's a reason one was a fifth round pick and one was a, or a fourth or excuse me a first round pick and one was a fourth round pick. So um, there's there's so much physically and mentally that Mac does consistently at a significantly higher level than Bailey does. We're talking to Dan Orlovsky and Dan. Obviously, you're following what Detroit has done, right? You watch them a lot closer than I have coming into this weekend. But for me, I had to, I needed to see Jared Goff. I needed to see this offense before I believed it. And they end up getting yeah. shut up by the New England Patriots. So did, did the Patriots just take something away, in your opinion, or, or was Jared Goff coming back down to earth in this offense? No. So I haven't even said this. I sent this to our producer yesterday. Um, New England has my attention. Um, they the, the last three weeks, they've – played different football. They've played better football. Um, it's a little bit of Jared. Jared. Jared did not play great. They moved the ball well. Um, they're, DeAndre Swift is a big part of their football team at tailback. Him not playing certainly mattered. Um, but the way that – I thought two guys stood out defensively, both Judon and Kyle Duggar. You know, like New England has my attention as a football team. Um if I was gonna, if you were gonna ask me what team that was clearly out of the playoffs right now that I honestly believe can go make a run, it, it is New England because of that run game right now. So um, Detroit fell off a little bit. They changed some stuff. And obviously, the the return for the touchdown has a big impact on the game. They changed some stuff defensively to try to simplify early on, and then they went back to their old stuff of just playing man coverage. And again, Jacoby wore them out. Um, Jared turned the football over. Um, so it, it was more of an impressive performance by New England, both defensively and their run game, than I think you know. De- Detroit uh, started so well; um, they got to get something good to happen for their football team quicker. It, it can snowball. So the the Patriots, um, their red zone is terrible. I, I don't even know if they've actually thrown a football into the re- into the end zone at any point in time for somebody to possibly catch it. But how do they get more production? How do they get better? at scoring points in the red zone. Yeah, so red zone is about three, three, three things. Christian, you know this. So first of all, it's about people. So do I have an offensive line? Because in the world of the NFL nowadays, to be really good in the red zone, unless you have freaks, I, a la like Kansas City, you have to be right. able to like run the football because teams are so committed to coverage. And that's that, that shows up even more so in the red zone because, as we know, significantly less space to go work it with so number that's number one number two you got to have some people on the on the perimeter that can go make plays um versus you know contested coverage i think the only guy right now you feel solid about that with new england is jacoby um and that's just feeling solid about it and then you got to get really creative with your play calling and that's not the strength of new england right now is the creative play calling um, there, it's definitely gotten better and there's more consistency and rhyme and reason to it. But, you know, I would say that they, they, for a team that runs the ball so well, um, maybe the change up or getting ahead of the anticipated move of, I'd like to see more play action in the red zone. They've done such a great job of play action out in the 20 to the 20. Um, I'd like to see more play action down in the red zone as well. But you got to get creative with it because it, you can't be your copy and paste three-level play action. So, Dan, uh, our buddy Tommy Curran, he asked Matt Patricia on on Monday, I believe it was, Monday or Tuesday, uh, asked him whether he felt vindicated uh, by that victory over Detroit. Do you feel that Matt Patricia has evolved enough or shown enough to be, I guess, to for us, for us naysayers to basically have to issue a mea culpa? 
Absolutely not. Um, but again, I think New England's got me interested. Um, what, what happened in Detroit happened in Detroit. And, um, you know, respectfully to Coach Patricia, like there's a lot of people who have shared their feelings on his time there, both people who were there and during the whole time or partially. Um, and, and no, again, you, you don't get to, you know, issue a mea culpa First of all, Green Bay's defense is the softest defense in the NFL right now. It is. So going and getting good completions against them does not like impress me because everybody, they're literally historically bad completion percentage right now on defense. So that's not going to impress me. And again, doing it versus Detroit, uh, you know, when Geno Smith hung a 40 burger on your head the week before, like that is not going to make me sit here and think, well, you know what? Maybe we were wrong. Um, but I will be honest and try to do my job as good as possible and say, like, okay, you've got me interested. I'm intrigued right now. And it's all because of their internal run game. That's it. And how it's, they're tying it into their play action. They're doing a really good job of not beating themselves. Um, and I could appreciate that. Now, will it continue to evolve and get better? Then we could have that conversation. But right now, absolutely not, no. So you mentioned an internal running game. The guys they're going up against this week, obviously Chubb and Hunt, the Cleveland Browns, have a very good running game as well. You've seen a lot of film on those guys. What can you tell us in the challenges the Patriots might face here on Sunday? Yeah, well, I can tell you the thing that they've got to feel great about is the Los Angeles Chargers who cannot run the football ran it down Cleveland's absolute throat, So, um, which was shocking to see. So you feel good about that. But, you know, for Cleveland um, – the biggest challenge for them is everything is everything looks the same in their offense. You know, you get presented New England's one of the great teams in the history of football of picking up on tips and tendencies and understanding, hey, when they get in this formation or this personnel grouping or these splits, they they're gonna run one of two things. Well, Cleveland is gonna present four or five, six different things. So that's gonna be the challenge is, you know, handling that volume of stuff that's gonna look the same pre snap. Obviously, the play-action game and the way that they kind of build it and the quarterback movement game is a massive deal. Now, this is the same offense that, you know, Bill Belichick and Matt Patricia famously shut out, essentially, um, in the in the Super Bowl versus the Los Angeles Rams and kind of spooked Sean McVay out of yeah. ever running it again, essentially. So they've got a good feel for it. Um, they, Njoku, their tight end, is a very good player. Um, and then... You know, Amari is one of the still elite route runners in the NFL. I I think the big challenge for for Cleveland or when you play Cleveland is their run game is 85 percent that outside zone run game, and you got to be so good at it because I don't need all guys to be wrong. I just need one, and then they have this sprinkle of a run game where it's like a really cool counter that week or a cool they'll pull two guys that week. So that's the big challenge is is kind of consistently slowing down that zone and then not allowing that counter punch run to be gashing where that's where they rip off 40, 50 yarders. All right, Dan, listen, man, we really appreciate it. Thanks. As we do every single Wednesday here at three o'clock, Dan Orlovsky ESPN, Dan, appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the football this weekend. Thanks guys. You as well. All Thanks. right. There you go.